All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome in. So uh, as we all know, the New York Jets last night stayed put at spot number 11, right? We didn't trade up. We didn't trade down. We we stayed at 11 and we selected left tackle from Louisville, Makai Becton, a six foot seven, 365 pound beast. Okay, so let's talk about it. Let's analyze this pick. Let's do a deep dive here. Uh, so I guess the first you know question that comes with a video like this is uh, it's a simple one. Did you guys like the pick? Based off of tape, measurables, uh, combine results, off the field stuff, interviews, all that kind of stuff, offensive scheme fit, team need, uh, projection, projecting that player to the next level, ceiling, floor kind of thing. How did you guys like the pick? And, you know, it's funny, after the draft, um, you know, I did, it did a couple FaceTimes and stuff like that with a couple people that followed the channel and stuff. Uh, and the, the reaction that I got based off of that stuff and, and you know, seeing Jets fans in the comment section of my uh, reaction video, Jets fans on Twitter, the reaction was definitely positive, right? I, I think maybe there was a couple people that said like, oh, I want Tristan Wirfs or, you know, oh, I want Jerry Judy or CD Lamb, what have you. But I feel as though the majority of it, majority of the fans really, really liked the pick. I think a lot of people recognize um, we desperately need a left tackle. We we haven't had a franchise left tackle in a long, long, long time since DeBrickishaw retired. I mean, really, that's that's what it's been. Um, you know, we've kind of like recycled a couple guys, kind of just like tried out a couple guys here and there, some older veterans, but nobody really, we, we, we never found the solution. Okay, so what we all hope Becton to be is the future franchise left tackle to be protecting Darnold, to be protecting or to be blocking Le'Veon Bell for the next 10 years. And yeah, I know Le'Veon Bell's not going to be playing that long, but you guys know what I'm saying. Uh, so when I look at Becton as a prospect, right, we already talked about his height, his weight. But remember, this is a dude who ran a 5-1 at the 40, a 5-1. Imagine a human being at six foot seven, 365 pounds running a 5-1. And I know like, this is something I used to think about when I was like a little kid all the time. Um, like you watch the combine and, and pro days and stuff. And, you know, you see all these numbers, 4-2, 4-3, 4-4, 4-4, 4-5, 4-6. Like all these like sub 4-5 numbers and all that stuff. And, and you, it kind of just gets cemented in your head that like, you know, people run this fast. Like NFL players sh should be running this fast. But if like you go outside and you watch somebody run a five flat, that's pretty fast, okay? Like, that's pretty damn fast. And especially for an offensive lineman, a left tackle, at that weight and that height, I mean, that shows to me that Becton's more than just a big body, like a clunky player. He has really good feet, and he's fast, too. So projecting him to get from level one to level two, you know, when he's taking on linebackers for screens and whatnot, um, I really really, really get excited when I think about Becton's future with the New York Jets, because I do feel like he's a great system fit for the Gase um, offense, right? Like the zone blocking style of thing where you need to establish a run game. I'm so sick and tired of seeing Le'Veon Bell, the star running back on the team, the best offensive player on the team, getting the ball and then just literally not even having a foot in between him and the center, him and the guard, him and the other guard, and then the two tackles. Like, he has nowhere to go. There's no uh, there's no aggression from the offensive line, at least in the past couple seasons. And we brought back guys like Alex Lewis. We brought in guys like Connor McGovern. He was the big the big guy, you know, the, the, the most notable guy, the former center of the uh, Denver Broncos. Swing tackle from Seattle, George Fant who I would assume is going to be uh, playing right tackle now. And then, of course, uh, Greg Van Roten, a solid, durable guy from Carolina, who's probably going to be the other guard, right, um, left guard. So I'm looking at this offensive line, and I'm thinking to myself, this thing is reloaded. This is a revamped offensive line. Four new starters, Becton, Van, McGovern, Van Roten. Those are, the, I, th I feel like all four of those guys are going to come in and play immediately because last year's offensive line play was god awful. The year before that was even worse, believe it or not. So Sam Darnold, this run game needs to get going. We can't just continue to be the 31st, 32nd, 30th ranked offense in pretty much every single category. We can't win football games doing that. So Makai Becton, it's not the sexiest pick. It's not the C.D. Lamb, it's not the Henry Ruggs, it's not the Jerry Judy or the C.J. Henderson or what have you. But this is going to be a pick that helps solidify, helps get the ball rolling. Um, if, of course, Becton pans out, right? And I do believe that. So what are some of Becton's strengths? 
I mean, obviously we talked about his size, his weight, his speed, his, his athleticism, his ability to get to the second level. Um, but two, well, really, there's two things that really stand out to me. Number one is feet. I know I kind of just, you know, uh, touched on that before, but his feet are really quick, right? That, you know, he's a, he's an agile dude. Um, I saw one DM last night calling him the dancing bear, which I thought was a cool, really cool nickname for him. He, this is a massive human being that's like, you know, uh, a ballerina dancer out there. This guy's a beat, like he's moving around really, really, really good. This dude is a complete athlete and I could not be more excited. But the number one thing, okay, the number one thing that gets me excited about Makai Becton, and it's not so much like physical, it's more of a mindset kind of mental thing, but it's his aggression that he plays with. He plays really tenacious, tenaciously, a re really, really, really aggressive tackle. And I love that because I feel like, you know, year after year, the Jets offensive line is just kind of hike and we block. There's no, there's really no emphasis at the point of attack. There's no uh, like, oomph, if you will. It just kind of feels like let's get through the game. Let's kind of try our best to protect Donald and see what we can do. But when you watch Makai Becton, he want it really looks like he wants to just impose and dominate people. Um, when you watch him s grab people, slam them to the ground, and just staring at them like uh, like a lion is looking at his prey, and the you know opposing linebackers, defensive ends, what have you, cornerbacks are on the ground, and he's just standing towering over them, and he just comes down and just smashes, like just destroys him again. That's what the Jets need on offense. We need to get more aggressive. I really feel like we lacked, we lacked an identity last year, and we really lacked an identity uh, the year before that with John Morton. We had no aggression. It was almost like, okay, like let's, let's go you know, try to block against these D linemen. It's not like, yo, we're going to punch these guys in the mouth, and we're, gonna, we're just going to dominate them. Uh, we're going to physically make them scared of us. And that's what Becton brings to the table, and I love it. I love it how he's not scared. I love it how he just wants to come in and just make an impact and physically make an impact. Make sure people know how physically gifted, how strong this individual is. I feel like he really wants to get to work and just maul people and just show people, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much the real deal here. Um, another huge strength of Becton probably like the number one thing uh, on tape, like as far as like projecting him to the Jets system, run blocking, zone run blocking, great. He's a fantastic run blocker. The, um, as far as pass production or protection, I mean, pass protection production, I think he could definitely use a little bit of work. He has the good feet, he has a good size, but as far as him being a, you know, a solid above average pass protector, um, of Darnold's uh, blind side. I think when he goes up against elite de uh, defensive ends, I think he might struggle. Um, more so speed guys, um, as opposed to really powerful guys that uh, almost like, like I feel like uh, Flower, or um, going up against guys like Trey Flowers and uh, Khalil Mack, like really strong guys uh, that are good edge defensive ends. J.J. Watt, Becton's going to do well. But I feel as though he might have trouble against the Von Millers of the world. Um, you know, those speed kind of guys that really do a nice job of bursting off the line and getting the first step and then just getting around um, and then or even getting inside. But that's kind of where I feel like Becton needs to, to get better. He's not obvious, obviously not a complete product, but he could come in immediately, bring size, bring height, bring athleticism, uh, bring aggression, uh, and really, really, really help out the run game. And I mentioned it before, I'm so tired of seeing the run game be completely non-existent. I mean, we brought in one of the league's best running backs, and we still can't even run the ball. How is that even possible? It's because we, there's no push. There's no holes for the running backs to uh, to run through at all. So with Becton, the run game should start to get moving. It's again, it's not a complete product. He's not a finished product. He has an extremely high ceiling, but with that high ceiling comes a pretty low floor as well. Um, you know, I know he did fail the, the drug test and whatnot, and I'm not 100% sure what it was what it was for. Um, I did see a couple things that was for marijuana, but I, you know, that it's not like 100% set in stone. And if it is marijuana, it's not really that big of a deal to me. Um, that's just me though. I know people have their opinions on it, but, uh, 
it is what it is. I like Becton a lot. I love the pick. I, you know, t uh, fills a need. Great system fit. Fell to us at spot number 11, so we didn't have to give up assets. I mean, imagine if we had to trade up to spot number four to go get Becton, and we had to give up our second and our third rounder. You know, we stayed put at spot number 11. We have three picks tonight. So I'm pumped about it. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And go Jets.